So welcome everybody to a, another episode um, of Agents of Awesome interviews. Let's hope the live stream stays with us. This is our second take two at this. Um, so we'll see how we go. Pray for us. <laughs> so I'm here with Franz, who is joining us from over in Liechtenstein. I almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Franz is new to our Agents of Awesome uh, community and has been sharing a bit about the initiative he's been involved with, which is called the Seed Economy and uh, creating a new currency. So um, I just wanted to hear more from Franz about what this is all about. So take it away, Franz. Um, give us a bit of a, an intro into who you are and what you do. Thank you, Nicole. It's good to be here with you. And thank you for having me on Agents of Awesome. It's so good to be here. Well, as you say, my name is Franz Josef Almeyer. I am currently in, uh, in Vaduz, Liechtenstein, a little tiny microstate in the middle of Europe, surrounded by snow-capped mountains and spring all around me. And uh, yeah, it's kind of in a little valley. So the sun has already come up early in the morning, but then the beautiful thing about this place is we have two sunrises. Finally, when the sun gets to the other side of the top of the mountain, then it, all of a sudden the, the sun starts shining. So I'm very looking nice. forward to that too. <laughs> Good. And so seeds, a conscious currency. Uh, I'll admit my ignorance. I am someone who, as far as things like Bitcoin, etc. go, you know, I, I hear about it. I have not dabbled in it. I understand there's this whole parallel universe that's taking place right now where people are so into it. I have a cousin that's been into it for years and, you know, it, it gets very deep. And I think that's one rabbit hole I've never been down. So for someone as ignorant as I in these matters, Franz, how would you how would you explain a bit about what what seed is and what is this conscious currency? Why do we need it? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, in terms of what I've discovered is money is nothing, nothing else than trust. And uh, at this day and age, we are kind of blindly, blindly trusting in our systems and not questioning the origin of money in terms of where it comes and what, what intention it has behind it. Um, and currently, given the situation, you know, there's a lot of trust that is being eroded by our financial systems in the sense that as all of these crises are going on around there, they're exposing, you know, a fragile dependence to, to financial systems or political systems that are not really catering for, for the needs of society. And uh, one of the premises that we found out there is that as this beautiful thing called trust, there is so much trust between and within communities all over the planet. So we have managed to find a way where we can provide, give value to that trust between human beings and between human beings all across the planet. So through that, we have set in motion right now a, a movement based on, on trust, on, on the technology of blockchain, which is as a fancy word for, for nothing else than a very interesting technological system to validate and distribute truth on a public distributed ledger. And uh, through that we have, as we are expanding the seeds movement, you know, the value of, of the currency of seeds is also growing. So I think my, my intuition tells me that there is more value in, in and between communities, perhaps even more valuable than, than all gold, than there is now uh, trust towards the, the current dominating system which sadly puts us in a perpetual state of scarcity, you know, and that scarcity is, is really artificial. There should be no need for that scarcity. And um, just to kind of give you also a big back background, you know, our, our current planetary and human condition is shaped by our financial systems. And today's standard traditional currencies are based on, on debt, an interest that means that every single cent and every single dollar or euro or you name it whenever that is created centrally through through 
through debt and interest, there's always debt attached to it. So that has put us in a state where we have indebted our future generations and also puts us in a state that our economies need to, to grow infinitely on a finite planet, which that is obviously something that doesn't work for the long term and sustainability of our entire existence. So I believe that if we are to change the trajectory of humanity, we also need to evolve those systems. Absolutely. <clears throat> it just makes so much sense, right? As the world is changing and in many, in many ways falling apart right now in terms of the old systems. I mean, what is going to be there when, you know, finally it's going to come to a tipping point where enough people can transition over into the new, whatever that is. But of course, before the new happens, you need those who are building it beforehand, who are the visionaries, who are already far out there creating, whether it's, you know, conscious currencies, permaculture communities, you know, whatever those pieces are that are already way out there. Um, you guys are, you guys are very far ahead in that process. So how do you address that topic of trust? Because that's so important. Yes, trust is um, lacking with the current financial paradigm that we are living in in the world. But how do you get people to transition over and learn to trust something they don't know about or they've never experienced? It's a great question. For us, it's actually been quite easy because what we are providing is precisely that which the current systems are not providing, both voice and value into a system. So a lot of our, you know, our current paradigm has left things with purpose out of the picture, you know, in terms of if you talk about all the healers of the world, all the people looking after our, our water, looking after our, our nature, we are in a market failure of anthropocenic proportions where capital, capital in with capital C has been eroded to only mean financial capital and completely leaves away spiritual capital, cultural capital, social capital. And what we're doing is actually identifying all of these projects and people that are still doing what they love to do, despite this, um, this uh, artificial scarcity which has been imposed on us. And we are literally providing them a piece of this economy. So right now we have created a finite number of tokens and we are identifying all of these organizations and networks who are, who are dedicated to doing good into the community and we're providing them a piece of this uh, financial system. And one of the uh, components of what we, we've done with Seeds is beyond the financial system, we also have a, an inbuilt governance layer in which people can self-coordinate and also continue the evolution of this financial system, which in, which in our current systems is very difficult to, to, you know, to change things politically or to organize way beyond, you know, the traditional four terms or a couple, four years of term in a political system. And all of that puts us again into to a very myopic state of understanding our relationship between communities and our relationship to, to our place around us. So by providing that value and that voice, towards the direct ownership and evolution of this financial system, we're able to provide that trust that precisely is what people are looking for. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, it truly is what people are looking for. And as you say, their community as well, that at its core, that is the value there. It's people, it's relationships. And of course, in this modern world, I mean, we're doing, we're doing this more than ever, trying to connect with each other, right? And yet we've never been so so incredibly disconnected from self, from source, from one another, from sustainability, all of those magical S words. So uh, how, how is it that this can be sustainable, this system that you're talking about? It's interesting, you know, there's uh, many different ways to look at it. One of the ones I always like to say as an example is, you mentioned right where we started, Bitcoin. Bitcoin being a fully speculative financial system, also based on the blockchain, but uh, with very little utility. What, what Seeds has designed is a currency with maximum utility. So our intention behind Seeds was actually to, to empower the local food networks of the planet, which is the mm -hmm. very foundation of our civilization, you know. 
with currently we, a lot of our planetary conditions suffer because um, our food systems are not food systems, they're more industrial systems. So we have created the world's first better than free cash, which means that instead of you charging, being paid, being charged fees for using that currency as all current uh, digital currencies uh, do, we actually reward people for the use of seeds. And that creates a positive incentives for exchange. You know, in, in all living systems, the measure of well-being is the velocity of exchange, the, that continuous motion. You can see it in, in the human body, you can see it in, in rivers or in any sort of living system. And whenever there is lack of movement, there is stagnation, which leads to disease. Our current financial system rewards stagnation. And therefore we have, you know, so much people trying to hoard wealth and ultimately leads to in the other side, you know, increasing inequality. So there's people growing way richer and while at the same time that implies directly that there's people who are becoming way poorer. And that's exactly what we see all over the world. And what we've done with seeds is that having a currency that has absolute utility, you can compare it to, to Bitcoin in the sense that Bitcoin in the very short lifespan it had with very few users created 150 billion US dollars worth of wealth. And, and if you can imagine what we're doing with seeds right now, giving this value to the healers and the people who are doing good in the world, we expect to actually be able to create enough wealth just by linking all of this plethora of movements and organizations who are invisibly linked towards a shared vision of change. And once we actually do that, then we will have enough funds to, to really regenerate our entire planet. And uh, I have mentioned briefly in here about this sort of system of better than free cash in which we reward the users for doing it. So that's where the magic of seed kicks in. We have found a way to, we call it uh, distributed monetary policy. So the comparison would be if your central bank would be at the end of the month coming to you say, Nicole, you've been a wonderful citizen. You've used this much Australian dollars this month and you've created this much business for our economy. Therefore, you have a check in the end of every month kind of directly from your central government. That would that's, be precisely, nice. <laughs> that's precisely what we're doing with seeds. You know, with the nature of blockchain, it allows us to, to, to track who is taking part in, in using that exchange and who's taking part in, in creating that well-being within the planet and within the economy, uh, within also the community. So by that, we're able to, at any, every lunar cycle, so we've programmed the lunar cycles to also bring us back into a relationship towards our, you know, the greater cycles that shape who we are and nature altogether. So at the end of every lunar cycle, the the collective growth of every one's contribution to this economy is then split in three ways. So one third of the entire new money of that is being generated goes to directly into the accounts of people and organizations who are contributing to this movement and to the word towards healing the planet. One third goes towards what we call the global DAS, which is the the global organization in which communities all over the planet can directly create proposals towards healing the planet and get that funding to do what they want to do. And the other third goes to bioregional cooperatives. So these are also groups of people all over the planet who, who can also at the same time apply and create proposals for doing the regenerative work that is necessary in the bioregions. So that way we have a very kind of like a distributed mechanism to, to provide the value for the people who want to do good in the world and to do it at scale, which is precisely what the world needs to do. I tell you what you say, Franz, makes my, it makes my heart sing. It makes my heart sing to um, imagine the possibility of being in a world where that is our, our normal 
mode of operating, normal, um, incredible. So, so let's get very practical. You sell potatoes, uh, you grow potatoes, I grow tomatoes, right? Mm. And we want to exchange in some way. Do, could we use our seed currency as part of that or how, how would that work? Absolutely. So currently, you know, you have, if you produce something, you say you're, you, you produce potatoes, like you're saying, and you want to sell it to your neighbor. So far, the only real viable method to do that is cash. And but then also right now, for example, with the whole financial collapse, we have a, a system where people are, there's actually not enough money to circulate. So it's also becoming an opportunity for us and also for alternative currencies to step in. But then as a producer, you have the option to use seeds, which is a, a currency that rewards you for its use. So that's why we call it better than free cash. So that means that you have an incentive to use seeds over using cash because first you know that you are being rewarded for it at the end of the lunar cycle. You receive a share of the collective growth that you're contributing by using seeds. But at the same time, you are choosing seeds because you know that it's actually taking part to regenerate the entire planet. While a lot of the money or the traditional money is actually very degenerative in nature. If you see that it's centrally created, has debt incurred to it, and it contributes to, to this polarization and fragmentation of our entire society, really. Beautiful. So we could use that as our mode of exchange between us as well. Yeah. And seeds can operate in conjunction with the current system, monetary system that is in place as well. Yeah, you because can, I mean, you can buy it's going to be there for some time <laughs> still, as yeah. painful as it might be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're what we're offering is a, a alternative that gives people more voice and more value. And of course, you know how seeds works is that you can buy and exchange seeds with traditional currency. So there's a, a market price based on seeds. Seeds is a free floating currency that it's going to be, you know, it's just like you can buy Bitcoin or you can buy Ethereum or thousands of other cryptocurrencies out there. You could also buy seeds, the conscious currency. Yeah, if you're... beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So Franz, how did you get involved in this? Because, you know, the one thing I know after speaking with so many agents of awesome, people that are out in the world, creating a more awesome world, and particularly those like you that are in action. You're actually, it's, this is not a vision. You're out there, you're doing it. You have the community, things are in motion, right? You guys are quite far ahead in your process. What I know of people like you is that there's been some moment within your own journey where a revelation, an awakening, an aha of some sort must have happened to, um, to, to, to want to engage in a more conscious, awake world. So could you tell us a bit about that? I'd love to. Yeah. This is a beautiful question. I think for me, it's been a very, very interesting and long process of discovery, of really self-discovery and also directly related to discovery of what's out there. So my journey begins in, in Guatemala, where I was born and raised. And uh, my mother is Guatemalan, my father is Austrian, and kind of was already catapulted into a very kind of contrasting culture of very different worlds. One one being, you know, having a very rich nature and rich indigenous cultures, but at the same time, a lot of induced poverty. On the other hand, Austria, which is like a more what the current system would like to call more developed country or not, with more wealth, at least financial wealth. And all the time that already kind of awoke in me some sort of curiosity about what it, what culture is and really starting to question, really question cultural paradigms built on scarcity altogether. So I was always very interested in, in doing good for the world and in, in healing the world. And I started working as a biomedical engineer and then went on to work for the World Health Organization and for afterwards for the Clinton Foundation. I, I traveled throughout the whole planet and really got to know so many different cultures and really saw the world from a cultural point of view. And uh, along the process, I discovered that while well, I was being very successful at what I was doing, 
a lot of the the work that I was doing really lacked purpose. It really, you know, I was making a uh, a lot of money doing what I what I loved, but I I saw that these actions were not really reaching the people that were supposed to reach, and it was it was really more perpetuating the status quo rather than solving it by the root. So there was something in me that continued kind of gnawing at my at my heart and at my inner self saying like, hey, you know, there, there's so much more we can do so much. There's the underlying foundations of society that really we need to really start reimagining. And um, at one point I had enough and I was like, okay, I'm, if no one else is gonna do it, who else than, than ourselves and myself? And that's where I decided to quit all of that and take time for myself to really explore what I wanted to do. And then I understood that at the very heart of this was the, uh, the financial system and our, and beyond our, our financial system are, you know, our, our fragmented society because there's so many wonderful people out there doing so many beautiful things. But one of the, the things that missing is that integration that mm -hmm. well, all of these people who are working towards a shared vision of change need to stick together need to really stick together and by sticking together we can really transform the world and that's where where we found the, the team who's behind seeds and we created this this literally this financial system which serves to to unite this group of people that to date are are fragmented you know and unite them into a vehicle that has economical power economical teeth so to say that we can really um, thrive as we work on all of these healing projects together or in terms of making the world a more beautiful place and by doing it we can really create an economical system that can outcompete systems built on scarcity mm -hmm. so that's kind of been my journey and I also relate to everyone who is working with the seeds community that we all share that this a similar journey you know in in terms of finding out um, discovering that our systems that are based on scarcity that really finding out that the true nature of of our life of life in general is built on on infinite abundance it's just our systems that have kind of imposed this worldview of of scarcity and fragmentation but it's all 100 percent artificial it's just a matter when of recognizing did, when did that aha moment happen for you that that actually the true mode of operation is infinite in abundance. And yet there is a system overlaid upon that that we have to operate within that most people think that is the paradigm that is not. Yeah, when, when, when did that door open for you? <laughs> yeah, there's a, I think there's a lot of different little puzzle pieces that came to me, uh, different points. One of the biggest one I would say is I'm, I have a very I, a scientific mind, you know, I'm, I'm a scientist and I'm very curious. And everything that I was exploring based on science was uh, based on, on, again, limit. And I kind of went down the rabbit holes in terms of cosmology and understanding um, what electricity really means, or what light really means in terms of in terms of a holistic approach. And at some point I discovered um, the, the electric universe theory where it's, which is all about, you know, understanding that everything in nature is uh, electricity or vibration, which completely is paralleled by all indigenous communities or cultures in the world have recognized that already. So making that connection to, to understand that really our planet is built on infinite abundance that we just need to know how to tap into this systems that can give everything without asking anything in return and that our current financial systems are literally based on on limiting our notion to that infinite abundance that is already there that was one of the aha moments and then at the same time at the same time made me recognize that okay if the infinite if the universe or the planet is infinitely abundant, we also need a financial system that caters for that notion. And that's what SEEDS is proposing to do, to have this sort of value system where every single contributor to this more beautiful world 
can directly be rewarded and can directly be participated and have a voice towards evolving the future of this financial system. Mm, it's, it's, it's so beautiful to hear the way in which, um, you know, that which we know which is eternal is also made modern for the modern world and the modern person, you know, with a tangible system, because that's one of the hardest things is when you're talking about the intangible things of eternity, Yes, there is that, you know, and we can have our, our heart moments and our revelations about all of those great isnesses, right, about the world. But to translate that into material, into something that can be exchanged between people that is tangible as well, you know, and to create entire systems out of that. I mean, I, I find that so exciting. I find that so exciting when that happens, you know, and this is this is why I'm just so passionate about different people and their gifts, you know, because as you say, you have a scientific mind. That's how it works for you. You're a systems type of guy. We need everyone with their different types of gifts, you know, and we have to honor the stories and the roots that we come from. I, I spent some time in Guatemala. I oh, love, wow. love, I had some magical moments at Lake Chiticaca, um, but we don't have Atitlan. to go there. Yeah, Atitlan, Atitlan. sorry, Lake Atitlan, Atitlan. Atitlan. And, um, you know, and, and so I so understand what you're talking about when it's, there's, and I come from two cultures as well. So I get it when you, you compare those two cultures and one is rich on one way, but another is so rich in other ways. And they are, we can value them, you know, by, by different mm -hmm. measures. But I, I get what you're talking about when you come from Guatemala and the, like everything is so rich there, the, the colors, the people, the smells, the vibrancy, it's all incredible, you know? So when we can truly understand the richness of life in all of its dimensions uh, and move that into a way now where we can make proper exchanges with one another I, I think what you're talking about is is magical <laughs> in in the most concrete way <laughs> yeah that's wonderful that you've been to Lake Atitlan it really maybe want to share a little bit about what we're doing with Lake Atitlan and what we're doing pretty much all over the planet so one of our missions right now is to seed by regional economies of well-being so in Lake Atitlan precisely is one of our first bioregions where we're focusing on being pretty much my home. We have right now projects in well, all over the planet, but one of the things now that you mentioned Lake Atitlan is that, so what we're doing there is we're, we're finding all of these organizations and who are working around the basin of Lake Atitlan and coordinating a, a whole systems approach to regenerating the entire Lake Atitlan basin. And what we do is, uh, so we provide a seed grant to all of these organizations who are already playing their part to make the Lake Atitlan a bit more regenerative and sustainable. And we're giving them a piece of this economy as well. And then we're gearing towards the co-creation of, of value systems or, or value exchange systems and regenerative jobs that provide that sort of transition towards making Lake Atitlan more beautiful. And that's also something that we are applying everywhere in the world. So if people out there are interested on or have a vision of a more beautiful uh, socioeconomical development of their bioregion, definitely reach out to us and we have the tools and the means to, to help you catalyze that emergence. Amazing, amazing. I know in this community also the the agents of awesome community. I mean, these are these are change agents in their part of the world. These are people that care passionately about what's going on. They've done their own work. They're honing their own gifts. They understand their own offerings. You know, some people are very far ahead in that process as well. And what emerges always is such a deep love of one's roots, one's community, and one's contribution to place and space. You know, so. Um, tell us more because you mentioned something in, in the chat about um, an invitation and a seeds passport, I think it was. Tell us, tell us what that is and how Agents of Awesomes can get involved. Yeah, I would love to. So we've pretty much packaged this entire new financial system and the gateway to it is we've made it as accessible as downloading an app. And we call that app the Global Seeds Passport. And it includes the, what we call the minimum viable community. So the tools to make 
a minimum viable community. So in the Global Seeds Passport, you you find your wallet, which is what's used to to store and transfer value. So seeds, which is the currency of the seeds ecosystem. And then you have the, a marketplace where all of these organizations and beautiful people are placing up their offerings to the community, where again, to facilitate that exchange between uh, between all of these wonderful people trying to make the world a better place. Another component in the Seeds Passport is a forum where people are able to co-create on ideas and, and exchange and, and really seed the visions of what they want to see in the world. And then the, another component is the co-op where those ideas, once they're, they've been cultivated, you place your proposal on the co-op and the community of Seeds, which is you and I and all other people who are in this sort of understanding are able to approve and we are literally able to provide the funding for that. So right now access for the Global Seeds Passport is based on invite only. So we're right now keeping the sort of like the web of trust to be to be as aligned as possible as this system grows. Oh, well, thank so you for I would, your invitation to the community. That's beautiful. <laughs> and I would love, obviously, you know, we're looking for organizations and movements like the ones you've been cultivating because we are we want precisely these communities to to be the first adopters and have and lead the way to kind of give direction to this financial system because we are as good as our community is so precisely we are designed so you to hear that agents of awesome you, you, hear, you heard that right if not rewind the video and just listen to that again because that was important <laughs> <laughs> get involved <laughs> mm -hmm. So we'd love to to welcome your entire community. You know, one thing that we could do is we even provide a grant in general for Agents of Awesome and that the Agents of Awesome can co-create of how to spend this money, how to spend the seeds. That could be an cool. interesting, interesting <laughs> cool. approach to do it. Yeah. Tell us, Franz, I, how, tell us about your core team. I mean, how many people are behind this initiative? Because this is huge. I mean, this is not a one-man venture. This is a movement. This is a global co-creative project and we can call it grassroots decentralized from the start. You know, mm -hmm. it's if this vision is to go through, it cannot be centralized. It really has to to be as far and broad as possible. And we have right now a core team of around uh, a dozen, a dozen, you know, open sourcers, wizards and healers who are brilliant, you know, very, very beautiful human being coming to co-create this. Our community at a large is already growing massively we have since our since our our launch which was on the 5th of november uh, late last year we have right now nearly 180 organizations and networks from all over the world who have signed up for this and so we have already a few thousands of people who are coming to do this we're speaking already speaking to to cities to national councils to to governments all over the world and right now costa rica for example is one of our our major targets we have a plan to make costa rica the first regenerative nation in the planet wow and we have very good buy-in from from the government so we're talking to the to the cabinet of the presidency and to the minister of environment we are talking to to microstates, to indigenous communities, to festivals, to cooperatives. So there's a whole bunch of networks <laughs> being woven together. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is such good news. This is the news that should be on when you turn that television on at prime time spots. This is what's important. This is it, wow. yeah. This is, and you know, the, the idea is to bring hope. We need to really get that hope out there. And um, especially in a world today where people are through our systems you know through our media systems we are being spoon-fed fear and in reality all of that is unnecessary you know fear is the currency of control yeah. and at the other side you know seeds is a currency that helps us you know find more peace within ourselves and exchange and create community so it's completely the flip side that's why we really rely on on sharing that message through organizations like you and i'm happy for that invite and I think this is so going to be so healing for people as well, because finances are at the core of stress, suicide, depression, anxiety, uh, you know, looking at the past and feeling upset about it, looking at the future and freaking out about it. I, it's the core and the, and the core is rotten in this case. And 
I, I mean, when you get talking with people about finances and you start to get down into their own financial relationship and journey, it gets deep, you know, there's programming in place, there are messages in place, and there are layers of almost trauma, you know, financial trauma that need to be worked through. And so I can just imagine just in participating in a system, as you've described, just the participation alone is so deeply healing. You know, it's like you don't even need to be addressing all of these other bits and pieces that are naturally going to emerge in an unhealthy system. Uh, when you try and be healthful within an unhealthy system, there's only so far that you can get within that, right? Um, and when you try to be successful, even when you want to um, be philanthropic and to assist others, etc., that can only happen when you've climbed to a certain level in order to then, you know, it's, still, it's still the top down approach, right? It's like the masses, at least I can help the masses then, but once I've accumulated this much, so just in listening to you, it's like my ears feel peaceful. My heart feels peaceful, <laughs> Francis. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So we know how Agents of Awesome can get involved. To wrap up, paint us a picture, like help us jump into your head and see the, the future vision. If we could bring that future vision into the current day right now, paint a picture for people of like what's it going to look like? Because that's how we bring it into the now, right? Is when we can share this vision together. Um, so help us get there. Help us create that with you. I'd love to. Yeah. You know, in the near future, what I see is um, I see us all living in thriving in globally regenerative cultures and societies all over the planet. And this beautiful shift will absolutely not be limited to to cities or to little bits of parts of the world, but it has a, a rural renaissance at the very core of its foundations. So we're gonna be able to provide and decentralize that abundance for all the communities in the planet that, uh, that wants, because again, um, scarcity is 100% artificial. And once we all recognize that, then we can all tap into to the inherent natural abundance that we already been given to by planet earth by our mother earth and uh, again this world this well-being economies won't be limited to geopolitics or any sort of man-made borders but we will be absolutely shared be shaped by a shared sense of um of responsibility towards the biosphere as a whole and um really what now counts is that each of us takes personal responsibility for for the collective shift we are all part of and to unite all of these beautiful impulses into a breakthrough towards, towards genuine sustainability, genuine freedom and genuine peace. And what a perfect time in many ways, um, given the global situation right now where people literally are in lockdown in their countries, eventually they're gonna be move, able to move around a bit more, but that will still be localized in many ways. And so here you're talking about localized communities and strengthening those. I mean, this is, this is like the perfect window for this to come through and people to learn about it and to, to start applying it. hundred percent. You know, we've been, we've been building for this and the whole COVID situation really, it's, it's hard to say, but it's really a golden opportunity for alternative systems to step in because as, as I was saying, people are really reimagining the foundations of what got us to this point. And many people in the world are very ready to pivot. And many people in the world are starting to see through sort of the narrative of what is, you know, the whole media culture, or mainstream media culture, what is our entire financial system, what, it, what are politics. And we are at a very good point to reimagine all of that and really jump into a new shift. And uh, in terms of beyond the pandemic, the whole economic crisis is really tragic because whenever something like this happens, there, what happens is that there's just not enough currency to, to circulate and people go bankrupt. But if alternative, alternative systems like us can step in, then we can really branch out and really have a breakthrough away from all of this and really mm. go into a more healthier world that is more equitable. Here is to a healthier and more equitable world. Absolutely. Right there with you. So 
Um, thank you, Franz, for sharing the vision, for extending the invitation, for helping those in this community to open a vision of what is possible and is actually happening right now. Um, it's possible to participate in. And one of the strong pieces I really take away from is, you know, we talk a lot in this community about how to be, your state of being, your, your mode of operation. And what I really hear from you there is that state of abundance, to be in abundance, you know, because in being in abundance in the present moment, we realign with that abundance that is always operating, you know, beyond pieces of limitation, thoughts and fragments. So marvelous. Franz, thank you. Uh, we'll see you more in our community. I'm sure people are going to be, you know, so guys, if you have questions, if you want things, there were no questions that popped up today so far, but there's been a whole heap of love for you in the comments. Um, if there are questions that pop up, Franz, hopefully you'll be open to answering some of those. Um, Always available. Perfect. Thank you. And definitely pop in. We'll pop in the links as well to um, seeds, etc. everything that you've mentioned so that we just have it in the one place. Um, once again, thank you and enjoy your second sunrise. <laughs> thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Beautiful to be with you today. Beautiful. Thank you.